My name is Eric Beach, and today I'll be introducing a very interesting topic to you guys, which is called Pascal Triangle. So it's actually a means of expansion. So if you're living in Pascal Triangle, Now, Pascal Triangle is actually a topic or a subtopic under the linear expansion. So it is majorly used for expanding from um, algebras with higher powers. So normally from our basic knowledge of expansion in secondary school, we already know that when we have x plus y raised power 2. Now this one can be easily expanded with the normal algebra knowledge. Now as you expanding this by saying x plus y, x plus y. So it means this is actually appearing twice. So that means from there now you can say x times x, this will give you x squared plus x times y, x y plus y times x, x y plus y times y, y squared. So here you have x squared plus 2x y plus y squared. So this is just a basic knowledge of algebra. In other words, there are some expansion whereby you have higher powers. So when you are having higher powers, for example, power of 5, power of 6, power of 11, there is no way you can actually do it with this basic knowledge of algebra without making mistakes, or you can do it in a little time. So, in order to shorten your journey and to make your work easier, that is the essence of Pascal Triangle. So, I will show us what is all about. So, Pascal Triangle was invented by a man called Pascal. The triangle is a result of the shape that it forms when you are actually drawing the part. It's like a diagram. So. Now, there are three basic rules in Pascal Triangle. The first rule is that it is being guided by uh, a coefficient of 1 at the left hand side and on the right hand side. Then, the second rule is that the addition of the two variables, the first two variables, will give you the next level. Then, the third rule is that it must follow a predefined pattern and each, each level starts for the power. This is what I mean. You know, the first law says that the first rule that guy Pascal Triangle says that. It must be guided by a coefficient of 1 at the left hand side and at the right hand side. So let's assume we start with 1, then the second one will be 1, 1 based on the law. Then now, that means the next level now, the second law says the addition of the two levels, the two numbers give you the next level. That's 1 plus 1 actually gives me 2. So I will have to go back to my first law, which says is having coefficient of 1 at the left and at the right. So I'm having 1, 1. So again, 1 plus 2, this is 3. 2 plus 1, this is 3. I'm having 1, 1. So again, 1 plus 3, 4. 3 plus 3, 6. 3 plus 4. Sorry, 3 plus 1, 4. I'm having 1, 1. 1 plus 4, 5. 4 plus 6, 10. 6 plus 4, 10. 4 plus 1, 5. I'm having 1, 1. So this is how you actually make your first caption. So the more you just be adding numbers together. If you're adding them together, you'll be getting the next level. So what it means is that this is the basic power of zero. That is why anything raised power zero is equal to one. So this is what you have. Then this is the basic power of one. This is the basic power of two. This is the basic power of three. This is the basic power of four. This is the basic power of five. I'm able to identify these things because my second number, based on the third law, that says the second number indicates the level you are dealing with. So the second number here is two. That's why it's basic power of two. The second number here is three. That's why it's basic power of three. The second number here is four. That's why it's basic power of four. Then the second number is five. That's why it's basic power of five. So how do you make use of this to expand? So let's assume I'm having x plus y raised to power four. Now, if you want to use Pascal triangle to expand this now, what you just need to do is that you um, you have it as a mindset that the first value you see here or the first variable you see here will be reducing. Then the second variable will be what increasing. So if the first variable is reducing, then the second variable will be increasing. So now <clears throat> I'm having a basic power of 4. That means if 4 is to reduce, that means it will be 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. That's the reducing power of 4. It's just like you are looking for a factorial of 4. That's 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Then if it's going to be increasing, which is for the second variable, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the pattern at which it will follow. So if it's reducing, it will be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And if it's increasing, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now, we'll just follow the pattern for this. 
then we can start now. Then that means the first variable here is x, which is going to have a power of four. That means I'm having x to the power of four plus now here now y is zero, so I don't need to include y. Then the second one is what three, so we have x to the power of three. Y is one, so I'll be having y. So I can put the power of one, and I can decide what to put it. It means the same thing. So now, now I'll go to the next one to be what x to the power of two. Then y is what y is also two. The next one is what x to the power of one. Then y is what three. The next one is x to the power of zero. So that means I don't have any x again. Then my y will be what my y will be four. So from here now I can actually sum it up. I'm having x to the power of four plus s cube y plus s square y square plus s y cube plus y is power four. Now. We have these values coming to places that they will not serve as a coefficient to this. So basically, I'm dealing with the level of uh, the level of four. That means my coefficient will be what? one four six four one. So that means that I'll have to include my coefficient to this. So I'll be having one x to the power four plus the next one is four. That's four x to the power three y plus the next one is six, which will be six s square y square plus the next one is four. It will be four x y cube. The next one is one. That's one one is power four. So now my answer will now be x is power four plus four x cube y plus six x square y square plus four x y cube plus y is power four as my final answer. So this is how Pascal triangle works. It is actually used to expand variables that has higher powers. So I know some of you might be thinking, is these things okay? Is it correct? Oh, I'll get the same answer if I expand this one after the other. So I will show us an example that will actually show that will be as a, that will serve as a proof for us to know that when you use Pascal triangle, you get the same answer as you get when you are using the basic um, algebra expansion method. So let me give us another example. Now let's choose a very small figure. So now we're able to get the concept of time. Let's choose a very small figure. So now in this case, now I want to expand with s plus y is power two. Now remember, if I follow the normal basic algebra method, what I'll have is s plus y, x plus y. That's x times x. I'll be having x squared plus x y plus x y plus y squared. Right. That means I'll be having x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So this is my final answer. So let's paint the answer down here. I'm having x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. This is the answer that we get. So we'll now make use of Pascal triangle to solve this same issue and see whether we get the same answer. So remember from the example I saw earlier, I told us that the y will be decreasing, y the x will be what? Increasing. So if y is, if x, that's the first variable. Is reducing that means I'll be having two one zero. Then it is increasing to be what zero one and two. Are you getting that now? So now let's solve this now. That means I'll be having s squared plus because y is zero, so I'm not having y. The next one is what x one y one plus x is now zero, x is power zero, then y is what is power two. So in this case, I'll be having x two plus x y. Plus any to raised power zero is one two. I'm having one y squared. So that means I'm having x two plus x y plus y squared. Now I'll now go back to my level. This is two. So I'm, I'm actually dealing with the level of two. So the level of two, the coefficient is one two one. So I'll actually include my coefficient here. So I'm having one x squared plus two x y plus one y squared. So automatically my answer will be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So I actually get the same result as what we are having here. So this is a, a basic proof um, to show us that Pascal triangle is actually used for expansion. And um, the results you get in expanding using Pascal triangle is what you get in using your normal algebra method. But the difference is that Pascal triangle works for higher powers. So when you see questions like x plus y is power 7, in this case now, what you make use of is Pascal triangle because you can't be expanding and be using the normal algebra method by saying x plus y, x plus y in several places. So if you actually take your time 
and also you will not be very very accurate. So for Pascal channel holes, you will be able to solve this easily using Pascal channel holes. So this is all for now. So in our next classes, subsequently, we'll be showing you how you can use Pascal channel holes to solve binomial questions. That's where you have to find the coefficient of n stand in binomial and your normal n stand. So you can use Pascal channel for that. So in the next class, we'll be showing you how you can use your Pascal channel holes to get anything you want to get. So make sure you make use of the comment box by dropping your questions and click on the subscribe button. So whenever I drop any video, you will be notified. Thank you very much.